Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Worship and Friendship United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you could join us. Um, before we begin, Pastor Jim has a few announcements for us. Good morning, friends. Um, just a couple of announcements. The first is today we are having our second Meet the Pastor social. It's going to be an ice cream social. So for those of you that signed up, you're in for a treat today. Um, I know Pastor Chrissy is looking forward to it, and I hope you are as well. Um, second announcement is about our Vacation Bible School reunions. Uh, they're going really well. Uh, we've seen a number of kids over the past two weeks attending the VBS reunions. Um, we need your help. We need some extra volunteers. The summer is long and people are uh, on the move for vacation. So if, especially if you were someone who helped with Vacation Bible School and you could volunteer uh, two or more weeks uh, throughout the summer, we would love to have your help. And uh, I'm going to point out that on August the 1st, um, I'm going to be away, and um, so is Kathy. So we could use extra hands that day. We want to make sure that we are always operating, reaching out, connecting with families and kids, and you're a part of that. So please uh, reach out to me, send me an email, or talk to me in church. Uh, if you're able to help out, particularly on August the 1st. And lastly, uh, the needs continue in our community uh, with the ACA Food Pantry. I encourage you to check out this week's Friendship Happenings newsletter for the current needs. Um, they'll be spelled out there. Um, so get involved. Remember, you can either drop off uh, donations outside the church in the plastic bins under the portico or in the narthex. Thank you so much. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of our Lord as we lend ear to our prelude. Mm -hmm.
us join together in the call to worship. Creating God, we gather to thank and praise you as we are part of your creation. May everyone and all creation on earth bless God's holy name forever and ever. Inspiring God, we gather to celebrate the wonders of your glory and mighty deeds. Faithful God, we rejoice that our God always keeps promises of grace and mercy. Intimate God, we gather to worship and revere you for the relationships that you have initiated amongst all of humanity, and especially for people who call on God in prayer. Abide in God, we give you our sincere gratitude for the miracle of your presence with us, especially when you respond by being there for us and raising us up when we fall. Amen. Let us pray. Holy we One, we bow our, our hearts before you this day. day. Strengthen, Strengthen us in our, our innermost being and dwell in our hearts through faith. faith. May, May we, we be rooted, rooted and grounded in Christ, Christ, whose love is beyond all knowledge. Help us comprehend even the smallest part of the beautiful mystery of your grace. Grant that we may experience the fullness of your presence with us. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith with a modern affirmation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. I'd like to invite the children and all who are feeling young at heart to come close for our moment with children. So I have a question, as I am apt to do. Um, how many of you have ever been fishing? Good, good, good. All right, how many of you have ever caught a fish? Now, come on, I've seen some of the pictures that your parents have posted online, those fishing trips to Burke Lake or Lake Fairfax or the Potomac. Yes, yes, so I've seen that some of you have caught fish. So did you catch a fish that was this big? Did you catch a fish that was this big? Did you catch a fish? That... No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, well, there's a whole history behind fish telling stories, and um, as we're going to find out in today's Bible story, uh, when Pastor Chrissy reads it later, um, we're learning about a guy named Jonah, and his is quite a fish story. You see, Jonah was called by God 
to give a message uh, to the people of Nineveh. And have you ever heard of that town before, Nineveh? Yeah. Uh, well, he was called to deliver a very important message to Nineveh. You see, the people of Nineveh, called Ninevites, they were displeasing God. They were not living the life that God intended for them. So God wanted to call them to return to him. And so he wanted to send Jonah to give this message. And do you think Jonah wanted to go to Nineveh to give this message to the Ninevites? No, no, that's not right, Miss Chris. Nope. Jonah decides to head the other way. He hops in a boat. He hides down below. And sure enough, he thinks, I'm getting away from God. I'm getting away from this mission that God is calling me to do. And lo and behold, this boat gets into an awful storm. And the people on board, the sailors, they are fit to be tied. And they're wondering, what is going on with this storm? Well. Jonah has a clue, and he fesses up that he is running from God. So what do these guys do? They do, yes, you're right, that's what they do. They throw Jonah overboard. You, you've probably seen that in the Veggie Tales. Um, and if you haven't, it's a great one. Um, so they throw Jonah overboard, and here's where the fish comes onto the scene. When you're fishing, you're accustomed to throwing something out and the little fish bites, right? Well, in this case, the big fish bites and he swallows Jonah whole. And you know what? That might sound scary, but this fish saves Jonah's life. Spits him out uh, right where he needs to go and Jonah is back on the mission, whether he wants to or not. And he delivers that message to Nineveh. And you know what? The Ninevites respond. They actually respond to God's message. And you know, that's, uh, I think that's something important for us to hear. Uh, whether you're little ones, middle ones, or older ones, God calls all of us on, for a mission. Um, it may not always look like a mission. Uh, what is that? What might that be for you? Uh, is that uh, telling somebody about Jesus? Is that helping your elderly neighbor that you see struggling to carry their groceries in, running over to help? Is that making peace with a friend who hurt you? God calls us to difficult tasks, just like Jonah. And with a little bit of grace, with God's help, we can respond. So that message is for you, that message is for me. I want you to remember this day that God has called you. Are you listening? Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for calling us. Thank you for your grace for calling us. Help us to respond. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fishes. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed it to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, 
Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the piece, pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten them. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is coming into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. And now we enter into the part of our worship where we have the privilege to come before our Lord and God with our prayers. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, today your word tells us that with the small offering of five barley loaves and two fish, Jesus offered substance to the many. Lord, we wonder about this. Sometimes we have doubts that such a thing could really happen in to today's world. We see the big picture, the thousands of dollars spent on trivial things, but we never hear the small wonders that are performed everywhere in your name as good people reach out to those in need. Lord, take away our blindness and our doubt. Surround us with a strong faith that when we hear the words of healing, we may confidently know that you are in the midst of all our lives. Heal our wounded spirits. Restore in us a spirit of joy. Lord, each of us has dear ones that we lift up to you in prayer. O oh God, we ask your healing blessing on each of their lives and situations. We also ask your healing mercies on all areas in which there is strife, oppression, and despair. Comfort your people with your love. Empower your disciples to serve fully in your world. We ask all this as we pray together the one prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Jonah, and we will read all of chapter 4. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh God, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord provided a vine and made it grow over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you have any right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said. I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this vine. Though did you, you did not tend it or make it grow, it sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and our minds this day that we may hear your voice, 
and we may know your will for each of our lives. Amen. Today's reading is part of the story of Jonah that we often leave out in Sunday school. This is because Jonah's what you might call a cautionary tale. At its heart, it's a story of what not to do. And when explaining Jonah to kids, it's hard to explain how someone, anyone, can have such a dramatic encounter with God, one where they are literally saved by God's own hand. I still don't get it. But then the world is full of people just like that, isn't it? So just to briefly recap Jonah's story, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Je Ni ugh, excuse me, Jonah doesn't want to go because he knows the power of God's word and the depths of God's forgiveness. He knows that if he brings a message of repentance, then many people in Nineveh will in fact turn to God. And he didn't think they deserved that kind of forgiveness. They were not part of God's chosen people. And they had a bit of a reputation for being corrupt. And they had often been at war with the Israelites. Jonah considered them to be enemies. And who wants to go and offer hope and forgiveness to your enemies? So he runs away. He gets a boat ticket for Tarshish, which he would have considered the opposite end of the earth at the time. And he runs. So there's a great big storm, and the whole boat is being turned apart, torn apart. And when the sailors on the boat are afraid for their lives, they find out that Jonah's running from God. And the sailors do the only thing they can think of to protect themselves. They throw this guy overboard. And this is when Jonah is swallowed by the infamous whale. Although, side note, nearly every translation of the Bible says big fish, but... When we hear big fish, we picture a whale in our head. So, to make an already long story a little bit shorter, Jonah cries out to God from the belly of this fish. God causes the fish to spit Jonah out, and he goes to Nineveh and delivers God's message. The Ninevites and their king hear God's message and repent and begin to worship the one true story. It's a happy ending. It's a Disney ending. Everybody winds up doing the right thing, right? Well, it should have been. But then we pick up with today's reading, chapter 4. Remember, Jonah considered the Ninevites his enemy, so he is upset. Upset that God is a God of grace and mercy. Jonah once again and literally says to God, I told you so. This is what I told you before I left for Tarshish. I know you're compassionate, and I know you were going to forgive those people. I should just die. At least then the Ninevites wouldn't have been forgiven. Jonah also has a little bit of a dramatic streak. And God is compassionate. And despite the fact that Jonah's being completely selfish and completely unreasonable and maybe a little bit racist, honestly. God feels bad for Jonah because God knows this type of growth can be hard. It can be hard to go from being an enemy to proclaiming grace and salvation. So God causes a plant to grow to give Jonah shade. But then after a day, the worm eats the plant and Jonah launches into another round of, woe is me, I should just die. He once again focuses only on himself and his situation. And honestly, he's a little bit whiny. And that is when God once again loves Jonah. But much like last week, God also gets a little bit frustrated and needs to give Jonah a reality check. And God says to Jonah, do you have any right to be angry? I love that God asked this question, because let's be honest, sometimes we all get a little caught up with our own stuff now and again. Life is hard, and sometimes awful things happen, and I am not dismissing that in any way. There are times when we struggle to see a way to move forward, and that is totally legitimate. But there are other times when we can all be, well, a little bit dramatic. 
There are times, to use an old expression, when we can't see the forest for the trees. When we get so caught up in the pettiness of our own stuff that we fail to see what is going on around us. And that is why God is calling Jonah out today. God says to Jonah, you're so worried about this plant, which you did not plant, I gave to you, by the way, and yet you have no worry for this 120,000 people in Nineveh? God calls out Jonah's lack of compassion and his lack of priorities. As we look for God's new thing in our lives and in the life of our congregation, we can't get so caught up in our own lives that we fail to recognize that God is working in the lives of others as well. We cannot become so bogged down with how we see our calling that we forget that God calls to all people and has a plan for all people. God loves and forgives all people, whether we like it or not, whether we think they deserve it or not. God offers grace and love to all without condition. If we fast forward to today's New Testament reading, we see almost the opposite of Jonah. We see Jesus and his disciples once again in front of this great crowd. People from all over the place had heard about Jesus and they came to see him. Some had come because they heard he was a healer and they needed healing. Some we can imagine, had seen Jesus before, or knew people that had seen him before, and they could not miss an opportunity to see Jesus again. Some may have heard rumors and wanted to see what all the fuss was about. Some may have even been there to prove that this guy didn't know what he was talking about. There are many different reasons why this crowd had gathered. And Jesus didn't ask them why they were there. He took care of them. We see the disciples wanting to do what Jesus asked. Jesus asked them how they're going to feed these people. They try to figure it out. The disciples get a little overwhelmed and a little flustered. They know they don't have enough money to feed these folks, but they try their best anyway. They find a little boy with some bread and some fish, and they want to figure out how many people can we feed with this? Like Jonah, they don't feel equipped. They don't think it could happen. But unlike Jonah, they have faith and compassion. And that is all God needs to work miracles. Unlike Jonah, in this story, they follow Jesus' instructions. And not only do the people end up fed, there are leftovers that they can take home with them. When we compare these two stories, the differences are night and day. When we compare these stories, we see that God is in work, sometimes through us, sometimes in spite of us. But either way, God is at work. When Jonah refused to do what God asked, God still makes it happen. The Ninevites still receive God's message and still receive forgiveness. But Jonah, Jonah ends up alone and frustrated and completely undone in the desert. He gets so caught up in who deserves the love of God that he's unable to receive it himself. In contrast, when the disciples allow God to work through them unconditionally, not only are the people fed both physically and spiritually, but they are fed as well. We worship a God who is the creator of the universe. We cannot limit God's ability to do a new thing. We cannot limit God's ability to do work in our world. When we place limitations on grace, when we place limitations on God's kingdom, we only limit ourselves. We limit our ability to be part of God's new plan. We limit our chance to be a part of God's living grace here on earth. We limit our ability to share in the joy that is building the kingdom. So this and every day, we only have one real question to answer. Do we want to be Jonah? Do we want to fight God and try to keep people out and end up feeling left out and alone ourselves? Or do we want to be the disciples? Do we want to invite all in, regardless of who they are and where they came from, or even why they came initially, to come and join us, to be part of God's kingdom, 
to hear the voice of Jesus and by feeding them the bread of life, feed ourselves as well. I don't know about you, but I think it's a pretty easy choice. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you that you are at work, that nothing, nothing on heaven or on earth can stop your love and your compassion. Lord, allow us to be like the disciples. Allow us to be willing and to have faith. Allow us to be open to all who come to be fed. In your name we pray. Amen.
benediction. Now go. Go into the world with the grace of God that all might be fed with the love of Jesus through you this and every day. Amen.